It's Belinda. I am going to be working on a canvas. It has already been covered with gesso and I've done some work with a palette knife on it to give it some texture. And what I'm doing now is I'm adding some Payne's Gray gouache to it and I'm um, watering it down a lot. By watering it down, I can get the colors to kind of uh, separate a little bit. The pigment and the dye kind of separate from each other and it's a uh, um, gum arabic based so even though it's water based it'll still kind of hold on to it uh, when watercolor maybe won't as much i do this for a little while so i'm not going to get into too much i just add a bunch of water to make sure it goes down into the cracks and this dries quite a bit lighter uh, than a regular paint does it, it, it dries even lighter than i think the watercolor would dry if i was using it this way and I'm just using one of my little cutting boards that I use for everything as a palette. Uh, I have tons of them. They're literally all over the, all over the room. <clears throat> I have, you might see some weird cuts because this was actually a very long stream and part two is also a long stream. So you're going to see some weird cuts where I just tried to like make it so that my hands were out of the picture and they came back in or whatever. I spent a whole lot of time working on the detail of this part of the painting, which in the end, in the long run, like this is probably the kind of thing that I don't think most people will, will notice. Um, you'll see that I'm using my little makeup sponges that I actually use those for ink and I'm using those to kind of balance it out. Um, I like to use those to move the, the water around and here you can really see the uh, detail that's in it. And I got my new hand dryer to use, which is very helpful. Oh man, I love this thing. Although I will say that when I was using it on some burlap that I had spray painted, which you'll see later, it definitely made a burning smell. And I think, I don't know if it was from the spray paint or from the burlap itself, but it was like a chemical uh, attack had kind of gone down in the room. So that wasn't, that wasn't very good. So this one I decided because a little bit was going to pour over the edges that I go ahead and put paper down. So that's why it's a great big mess. Also, you're going to notice my nail, my, my uh, pointer finger nail in my right hand. I, I probably shouldn't even mention it because you won't notice it until I say something, but whatever. It was driving me crazy. Um, I have to get my nails done tomorrow. I have a gig on Friday and Saturday this week. Uh, so I just, I just haven't gotten it done yet because I just usually try to get it done on the day of the, the day of the show. So I just, it's been broken for a few days and I just feel bad. I kind of want to put a finger caught on just to be, you know. I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling a lot, but that's kind of, I guess that's kind of what I do during my shows too. Uh, just kind of rambling. So I'm going back in now and I'm adding a little bit of, um, a little bit of shading. And again, this dries very, very light compared to, um, what you'll see on here. And I also have the contrast up just a little bit cause it's hard to see, um, from my camera sometimes, uh, if I don't mess with the uh, white balance or the contrast. People can't see it, and then it looks very dark. Um, I really love working with texture, and I've done these kind of paintings for, I want to say, probably 20 years now. Um, I haven't done as many that are uh, as linear as these, where I put like straight marks in them. I usually do stuff that's very gestural and kind of rounded. So this has been a little bit of a, a different... A different way for me to do things but I got all these canvases and I decided to do a bunch of them one day and I just started like 10 paintings at once okay so it's mostly dry now and I'm at the point where I'm gonna start sanding on it and I thought that I cut this down yeah I guess I did but so I'm showing the texture and you can see that the where the colors have separated so you can kind of see where it turns gray and where it turns blue and that was really what I was looking for now I originally was gonna sand it and realized it was too wet, so I put that down. And I then I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to use this tool that I have. And I realized it was still too wet for that, so just kind of rubbing the paint around and that didn't work. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna use a paintbrush. Yeah, so I started cleaning it up a little bit with a paintbrush to bring out the texture. And again, in the final product, this actually is very subtle and it probably isn't really even necessary, but I really love to have these kind of details in my paintings that you might not notice unless you were looking at it for a long time, or if it's just something that like is hanging, you can kind of like, you know, notice it later on. I don't know. 
it's kind of my thing is I like to put in work on stuff that I don't think other people will even notice. So I did this for a long time as well. I, I kind of went back over and picked up all the high areas. It's almost like reverse dry brushing. So I'm like dry brushing it, but I'm not adding any paint. I'm, I'm removing paint. I'm just kind of cleaning it. And that's the great thing about um, gouache, but I could do this with acrylic paint as well. I would just have to do uh, more sanding and I do eventually end up sanding. So I decided to switch to this uh, paper towel and I kind of go over in a lot of areas and start really pulling out um, some different values so I can try to get it. So it's not, it's not all the same value now. After I do this, I end up getting some of the paper that I did in my last video where I had made rainbow gelato paper and I used some of it to make circles and I ended up using it to make some squares but I used the side that already had uh, mixed matte medium on it. So basically all the color that's underneath it has already been set. Oh, I went back to, to sanding and I'm sanding and sanding and sanding. I actually don't like sanding that much, but cause it makes like a big mess in here, but it, I like the way it looks. So uh, back to the brush, man, I spend way too much time doing this just occurs to me like how long I'm actually spending doing this because like I'm pretty sure I sped this up to five times the speed or something and it's still like 15 minutes which means that, who knows math is hard <laughs> no it was, it was pretty long it's like it was a pretty long video anyway still sanding still wiping sanding and wiping sanding and wiping it's like putting on makeup you just blend it like a thousand times sanding wiping sanding wiping wiping sanding and you know, this is usually when we're having a conversation. So it's not, I mean, it's not like I'm just sitting there looking stupid the whole time. Although, I mean, that does happen sometimes. I just kind of zone out and we end up talking about something completely different. I don't get any art done. That's why I try to edit these videos. Anyway, so all sanded and wiped for the last time, hopefully. And I was showing the other painting that I have like this. It's a little bigger because they're kind of like brothers. They're like the same. They're very similar. Um, here I'm getting out the paper. I'm just cutting, deciding what I want to cut. I start cutting it and then realize that I'm cutting all crooked because <laughs> I'm really bad at it. And so I end up taking it over to my cutter and trimming it down, cutting bits, deciding what I want to do. <laughs> I'm really upset with these gelatos because I think I mentioned this before, but like the colors that they do have, they're such a weird variance of colors that you don't just get like primary colors. So I had to blend some stuff together and I started really playing with these for a long time. I think I cut a bunch of squares out and then I ended up kind of, I don't know, just messing with them. I added ink to them. Um, I added more gelato, I, you know, rubbed them together, I wet them, distressed them, you'll see this coming up. So um, here you're going to see me get out my cutting mat, and I had I had gone ahead and cut it down on the cutting board, or my um, paper cutter, to try to get it pretty even, but because I'd already made bad cuts, I decided to start using my cutting mat to kind of trim it down and actually use a ruler, which it turned out I cut them all crooked anyway, so it didn't really matter, and I don't know why I spent all this time cutting them down. So... As you can see, I'm cutting down squares. There's not really much else to explain here other than I suck. And if you want to know what that cutting tool is, somebody asked me in my chat. Um, it's made by Fiskars, and I think it's called a like a hand, it's like a craft cutter, I think is what it is. And they're really inexpensive. So um, I've spent a lot of time in my chat recently talking about, uh, we always talk about different issues, we talk about health stuff, we talk about a, a little politics, but not much. We talk about you know, personal stuff. Um, and I was talking about my anxiety and how I've had a really hard time sleeping lately. And it doesn't seem like, it seems like no matter what I do, um, I'm not able to sleep. And just so you know, I like, I do have sleeping medication and I actually have anxiety medication. And even if I put them together, um, I'm still not getting more than three hours of sleep. And, and even that sleep isn't good. I just kind of thrash around. I'm mean, here. I play with my squares for a while. Cause I like to do that. <laughs> um, I decided for, some reason I'll jump back to this for a second um, that I was going to try to do a layout which I, I, don't, I don't really do that a whole lot but I guess I do sometimes but I don't know I don't know what I'm doing just fucking around messing things up and getting gelato all over my fingers and I wish I had sprayed it so anyway so yeah sleep has been eluding me and it's weird because 
I'm fine. And then like in the middle of work, I crash and I just have to leave. Um, and I've actually had to do that a couple of times now where I've left work and just come back later on to finish my work, which is stuff that I can do later. So it's not that big of a deal, but, um, I'm trying to take sleep where I can get it. And it doesn't seem to, whatever I do isn't helping and changing my schedule didn't help. And it's just my anxiety and like my, my PTSD and my anxiety levels have just been sky high lately. Um, but there's this festival in town or going to be in town in uh, fountain square that I really want to do, but I'm really uncomfortable, um, being out in public these days. And so even though I know that like I have a bunch of stuff to sell and I could probably have a booth, I'm, I would almost consider hiring somebody else to do the booth for me who probably couldn't answer questions about my art, but I don't know. I I just, I kind of want to do it. I still have a few days left to decide. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't know. I love being involved in the art scene and I know that once I do it, like if I actually go there, I'll have a good time. It's just the thought of, you know, dealing with it and actually setting up a table and figuring out payment methods and I mean, doing all that stuff. Like I don't have a, I have a way to take cards, but not unless people pay me via PayPal, like directly or whatever. I didn't get one of those, uh, square readers or whatever those things are. I haven't done that because I haven't really sold, um, in person. Anyway, as you can see, I am distressed. So, so every time I see the distress oxide, I always yell distress when I'm in chat. I can't not help it because it's just like distress. Anyway, so I'm distressing these. And by distressing, if you don't know what distress oxides are, all this is, is they're pigment and dye based. So when you hit them with water, the pigment and the dye separate and you get, you know, you get the distress look, but I am actually very impatient with them. So I never leave the splotches of water on them. I just like hit them with a, a paper towel to pull up the, to pull up the pigment. Cause I don't mind either way. Sometimes I do let them dry, but for something like this, I'm not going to do it. Cause it's like a water droplets that just get pushed around by the heat gun. I actually did this for quite a while. And, um, anybody that's watched my, my streams knows that I'll generally spend a lot of time doing these little details and then I'll put some of the pieces aside to use later on. So I'm not like just making everything for this one piece. Any Anything that's left over from this I can use in future projects. And I just have bags and envelopes and all sorts of stuff like this where I've saved it to use multiple times. So I'm distressing, 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 distressing. I got I did get the new set of distressing. So I, I was trying to use some of the new ones, but... Um, I'm a little annoyed with the the color of these as well. They're, I mean, I know they're supposed to be like chalk paints kind of, and they're kind of flat, but some of the colors are vibrant and some of them are really, really not vibrant. Like really, like they're not even the color on the cap because I made a little swatch book and they're nowhere close. I should actually upload my little video that I made of the swatch book, but it's not very good. Yeah, I got this editing software and it's it's really nice to be able to I don't know, finally make videos. I've been telling people that I'm going to make videos for a long time. It's just that I haven't had the time to learn the software. And it turns out this is actually a lot more intuitive than I thought. Um, I haven't really edited videos since I edited on an editing bay with VHS tapes. So that tells you how long it's been um, since I've done a lot of video editing. And I mean, I've done a little bit here and there for camming, but not that much. I actually do really like this bright yellow color. And I think I ended up using it in a couple places. Um, actually, the final product of this is not finished yet. But by the time I upload the second video, it will be done because I'm going to be working on it today in my stream, uh, which will be in a few minutes after I get this voiceover recorded and my video uploaded. And then um, once it's finished, I'll probably take a photo and you know how that goes with YouTube. I'll make that the cover photo or whatever. I don't even know. Like YouTube is not really my forte, but I decided to go ahead and upload videos anyway, just to kind of help out. So we're getting a little bit close to the end here where um, I'm doing a lot of cutting and then I start uh, kind of outlining these with these pit markers from Faber-Castell. The, they're actually really nice um, India ink markers. I had been using India ink in my squeeze brushes, but I like these markers. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know why I did this part right now though, because I ended up cutting them all different shapes later on, which you'll see in the second video. And uh, yeah. So I think I actually cut part of this because, I mean, once you see me, you know, color the outside of a piece of paper, here we go. So I grabbed some burlap that I had spray painted 
and that is where I start kind of doing a little bit of layout and I ended up leaving it here uh, overnight so that I could start to stream the next day um, so I get some burlap and I ended up adding a little more spray paint to it so it is quite a bit darker than this and I am still have more work to do on it but this is kind of you can kind of see where it's starting to go and doing a little bit of layout just messing with stuff cutting cutting messing around and I had wished, you know, I honestly wish that I had made these out of chipboard or made these out of like, uh, I don't know, anything but this, maybe little wood pieces or something, because I really don't like using paper on canvas like this. I don't trust it. Um, I feel like it has to be framed behind glass or something, even though I can spray it for a million years. <laughs> anyway, um, it's just, the video is just about over. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching and I know that like my videos are kind of weird and I'm a little bit rambly, but I mean, this is kind of who I am and I'm not really much of a tutorial type person. So um, I can tell you anything I'm doing. So uh, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.